de bouche de bagada de gede bogo do sali bandara bache de 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 gede karu sali je les ouz et les ai je les ouz ali bado shira ragade ze vous ala bragade karu si la digada jale mado zali bragado ziladi zilado robo shila gada hare bo shira bazi gede thank you jesus azi gede bogo do shali bagada Zevu zila de gede, je le bo zigada. Ma ku se ta 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 re gede gede gede. Ze gede brogodo mari gada, je le bo zigada gada gada. De 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 karo sura gada gada. De ke de de bro kasida bragade. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Azi garu shali bragade. Karu bo sita bragada danda raba. Hunde zigada bragade. Je le de de korosu taraba koriba shitanda ragadaya. Ze vous il a de ma koriba sita taragada. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Ah, jale zu valiga de. Ah, braso korobo salima karaba shede de regede. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we lift your name. Father, we judge the faithful. Oh, you are God all by yourself. Receive all the praise. Receive all the glory. Daddy, I show you appreciation. I worship you in the beauty of thy holiness. You deserve my worship. You deserve our praise. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor and adoration. In the name of Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. God bless you. The Lord bless you. Welcome to the new week. Hallelujah. God is good. I'm super excited for the new week. Glory to God. This is a week of testimonies, mega testimonies, a week of manifestation. A week that God will surprise you with testimonies, with breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning, God wants us to talk about the anointing. Hallelujah. That we are overcomers in this world, in this life. Glory to God. Let's talk about anointing. We often hear anointing. Glory to God. In church, in ministries. What is anointing? Glory to God. In this case, we will talk about spiritual or scriptural meaning of anointing. Glory to God. So anointing is the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit is indwelling. The very moment you give your life to Jesus, the very moment you accept Jesus as your Lord, the Lord of your life, the Holy Spirit becomes resident in you. You carry the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will enable you to understand, to apply, and administer spiritual truth. In other words, the Holy Spirit will witness the truth, the truth in God's word, the truth in the scripture. Glory to God. So you can simply say that the presence of the anointing enables believers, enables us to have a spiritual connection. Glory to God. Is the Holy Spirit that brings about the anointing 
However, the anointing is more like you would say an empowerment. So when a believer receives the Holy Ghost, or when the Holy Ghost begins to dwell in the life of a believer, the Holy Spirit will give you the power, the anointing. Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and power. Glory to God. So the Holy Spirit is what gives the believer the empowerment. However, the Holy Spirit will anoint you. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit, when it comes to dwell in the life of a believer, it allows us to connect to the spiritual realm so that we can receive and understand or process spiritual data as it is transferred from heaven to the earth realm. So it's the anointing that connects us. God is spirit. Glory to God. The only way we can relate with heaven is when the Holy Spirit grants us the anointing. Glory to God. The spiritual receptivity that comes as a result of the anointing allows the believer to maintain fellowship with God because of the presence of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And so you can be assured that if you believe in Jesus, if you accept the Lord Jesus, that he has all the power in earth and in heaven. He will anoint you and give you power through the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. To be anointed is to be covered in consecrated oil, which is spiritual. It's not physical. We're talking about spiritual anointing. It's not of the flesh. We see that in Exodus, if you go to Exodus 30, you read from 31 to 32. The oil that Moses was instructed to compose to consecrate Aaron and his sons for all generations. Glory to God. They are the priests ordained by God. That oil that Moses was instructed, commanded by God to prepare to anoint Aaron and his son is a shadow of what Jesus pours out upon anyone who believes in him. It's the same anointing, same consecration. And he says, as you speak to the children of Israel, saying, this shall be a holy anointing oil to me throughout your generations. It shall not be poured on man's flesh, nor shall you make any other like it, according to its composition. It is holy, and it shall be holy to you. This is God giving Moses an instruction on how to anoint the house of Aaron. Glory to God. And so the anointing is so powerful when it comes that it helps us to overcome every act attack of the enemy, the fiery darts of darkness. Glory to God. There is an anointing available in the life of a child of God to overcome. Glory to God. It says, if you go to Isaiah chapter 10, popular scripture, Isaiah chapter 10, Verse 27, he blessed me so much. He says, it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Glory to God. And so to overcome, you need a spiritual anointing. Glory to God. Notice in the scripture that the burden is taken away on a specific day. Glory to God. He said it shall come to pass in that day. 
So the, the, the taking away of the burden is occurring on a very specific day. The yoke is destroyed from our shoulder. Glory to God. To free us, to free us, to grant us freedom, the burden must be removed. Glory to God. The burden crumbles and comes down because of the anointing oil. Glory to God. He says, on that day, the yoke, the yoke will be destroyed. Yokes are obstacles. Yokes are impediments. Yokes are hindrances, whatever that stops you to your next level. Whatever that stops you to achieve your purpose, glory to God. Whatever that stops you to get to your destination is a yoke. Yokes are of darkness. I like to call it the yokes of darkness. Glory to God. But thank God for Jesus. He is our burden bearer. Jesus will anoint you with power to overcome the yokes of the enemy, the yokes of darkness, the yokes of sin, the yoke of death, the yokes of stagnation, the yoke of failure, the yoke of whatever it is the, 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 the devil comes, the baggage the devil comes, comes with. But thank God we are light. The Bible says, for light shineth in darkness. And darkness comprehends it not. What that means is that darkness will never overcome light. We are light. We carry light. Nothing darkness is permitted in our lives because the anointing is there. Glory to the living Jesus. When you are sick, you can't do anything, right? You probably will be so tired, so weak. To, to serve God, to do things for God because you are inf afflicted with infirmity, with sickness. That's a yoke. Glory to God. When you are poor, there's a yoke of poverty. Ministry is run with money. Bible says that money answers all things. You can't even run ministry or run your household without money. It's a yoke. The yoke of poverty. There's a yoke of failure. There's a yoke of rejection. This comes from the enemy. But I have good news for someone under the sound of my voice this glorious morning. No matter what the burden is, it bows down in the name of Jesus. God has given us a name that is above every other name. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those on that earth and that every tongue shall com should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So whatever the burden is, we have a burden bearer. We have the power of attorney. God has given us the power of attorney to use the name of Jesus to overcome any burden, to overcome any challenge, to effect positive changes in our lives. Glory to God. What a name. Glory to God. Another scripture says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Our faith. Our faith. First John chapter 5 verse number 4. Let's read it in New Living Translation. I had to, um, I had to study it in different versions. New Living Translation says, For every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Glory to the living Jesus. The word 
in this scripture is evil word. Evil word. Evil word. The word is to overcome this evil word. Glory to God. And I paraphrase if you allow me. He says, and we achieve this through our faith. Just because you believe in Jesus. Just because Jesus is your Lord and Savior. The minute you accept the Lord Jesus, you are welcome into God's family. You are set apart. You have the anointing to overcome the evil world. Glory to God. Remember it says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. The world whatever, whatever. We, we we all have to overcome some obstacles. Just because you are, you're a child of God doesn't mean the enemy will not throw fairy dance. Doesn't mean there won't be challenges. Doesn't mean there won't be obstacles. Glory to God. We will all have to overcome some challenges, some obstacles in our Christian work. Glory to God. But don't worry. Scripture says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from all of them. They will come. But we have the promise of God. We have the promise of God in the word that no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, no matter the challenges, we will overcome. And what gives us this power? The faith. What we believe in, the gospel, the word of God, gives us the victory. Glory to God. The battle is already won. The reality, the truth is that we have victory. That we will overcome because there is an anointing, there is a grace. Glory to God. We are overcomers. Keep saying it to yourself. As many times as you need to, you need to have it at the back of your mind that you are an overcomer. Glory to the living Jesus. God intervenes on a certain day. Glory to God. And he helps us overcome our problems. Remember there are seasons. There are seasons, seed time and harvest time, cold and heat, winter, summer, spring. There are times and seasons. We may be in our situation for some time, but there will come a time, there will come a period, there will come a month, there will come a year, there will come an hour, there will come a second when God will deliver us because of what? The anointing. The anointing, one thing it does is that it helps us overcome obstacles. Whatever is standing in your way. It says to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Glory to God. So it will, it will pass because of the anointing, because of the grace. Glory to God. Come to me to Revelation chapter 2, verse number. So it says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to it from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Overcoming. Glory to God. So we know in Genesis, from the beginning, that God has placed two unique trees in the Garden of Eden. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Glory to God. So eating from the tree of life brought eternal life into God. Gives eternal life. And when you eat from the tree of the knowledge, it brings about the understanding of good and evil. And with it, 
comes the option to sin. Because there's a willpower. God has given us willpower, though. So, but when you eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge, it introduces that willpower of good and evil. And the tendency is the option to sin. You see, when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge when they were deceived, they disobeyed God's command and chose their own path. They chose their path to destiny. And therefore, we know the consequences. God excluded them from Eden and barred them from the garden. Barred them from eating of the tree of life. They chose their pathway to, to destiny. They chose their purpose. The Bible says eventually, evil will be destroyed. And believers, you and I, will be brought into a restored paradise. In this new creation, everyone will eat from the tree of life and live forever. Glory to God. He said, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So for the overcoming anointing, for the overcoming power, all of us will eat from the tree of life. Glory to God. So there is a future where our obstacles, our problems, our challenges, our pain will be overcome. God says he is going to give us a reward when we overcome. Glory to God. To God. We will have the victory. We will have the promise and the blessing. God will break through our doors of hindrances. The door will be open. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. He said, I know your works. See, I have sent before you an open door. And no one can shut it. For you have a little strength. have kept my word. And have not denied my name. Glory to the living Jesus. And so the overcomer's anointing makes us stronger. You see, with no anointing on you, you can't do anything. It's the anointing that makes the difference. It's the anointing that makes you who you are. The anointing makes me who I am. The anointing makes you who you are. We want to embrace the anointing and be an overcomer. Glory to God. The anointing to overcome. God sets us free by releasing the anointing and the yokes will begin to crumble. God has wired us, you and I, to conquer every circumstance. I'll say that again. You and I are wired to conquer every circumstance, every situation, every impediment, every obstacle. He says, yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. This is the apostle Paul. Paul said, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Romans chapter 8, verse number 37. New Living Translation said, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Jesus loves us with eternal love. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You are more than a conqueror. 
We are created to be more than conquerors. Glory to God. Are we understanding this mystery? We are created to be more than conquerors. Jesus is our pattern in how to be a conqueror. Jesus too faced challenges. Bible says he was spit on. He was beaten. He was mocked. And then finally crucified. He had the anointing of an overcomer. Jesus needed the overcomer's anointing to suffer, to endure the pain. If Jesus, our standard, the whole Jesus, the Lord, faced challenges, we will definitely have challenges too. But we need an anointing of the Spirit of God to overcome. Glory to God. As believers who have Jesus' power available to us, his power is available to you and I. We will expect great victory, both now and for eternity. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Glory to God. We are all anointed to perform these things that Jesus did. He said, greater works shall ye do. Jesus was baptized by John, and he came out of the water full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was endorsed for the work by the power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the anointing of an overcomer. Glory to God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Without the Holy Spirit, Jesus probably wouldn't have been able to do what he did if the Spirit was not on Jesus. The obstacles would have stopped him from carrying out the assignment God has given him. Glory to God. Obstacles are demonic powers to prevent you from doing God's will. But when the Lord anoints you, places his fire on you. The demons flee. The demons will see and flee. The Bible says, demon trembles at his presence. Every enemy of yours bows down to God's anointing. I said it. Anointing is all that makes difference. Jesus is not, uh, the, the, the enemy is not scared of you. Satan is not scared of you. G Satan is scared of what you carry. The anointing you carry, the deposit of God in you. Glory to God. Jesus received the cross anointing to overcome. Cross anointing to overcome, to endure. Before he went to the cross, he spent time in Gethsemane, praying to God, which is another strategy to overcome prayer. Bible says in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 22, if you read verse 41 to 43, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, I am my other. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. 
And the Bible says, then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Strengthening him more with, with anointing. So in the flesh, the Lord Jesus didn't want to go to the cross in the flesh. But he prayed to God and God gave him the strength to go through with this plan of our salvation. God sent an angel from heaven to strengthen the Lord and release an anointing on him to help him fulfill this important as heavenly assignment. Glory to God. You can imagine, even God's own son, 100% God, 100% human, prayed to the Father. This cup is difficult. And the Bible says the strength of God came on him. Every one of us have a desire to do something for God, to do something positive, to pray, to fast, to read, to study the word. And the flesh, the devil, the enemy interferes, attacks our plans. But the spirit of the Lord emboldens us, grants us the boldness so that we can do what God wants us to do. This is why you need the anointing. This is why you need the anointing to overcome. He says, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Glory to God. We conquer not by might or power, but by God's spirit. You see, many people believe that to survive in this world, in this earth realm, you got to be tough. You got to develop tough skin. You got to be strong. You got to be unbending, domineering, or perhaps harsh. But God says, not by voice, by force, not by strength, but by my spirit. The key words are by my spirit, by my spirit. It is only through God's spirit that anything of lasting value is accomplished. In strength shall no man prevail. Glory to God. We don't have any power of our own. We don't have any strength of our own. We yield to the God's spirit. We yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. The anointing. Glory to God. You see, in that scripture, the returned exiles were very weak. Harassed by their enemies. Tired. Discouraged. And perhaps poor. But they had God on their side. We got the backing of the Spirit. And so as you live for God, for Jesus, determine not to trust in your own strength or abilities. Instead, depend on God and walk in the power of His Spirit. There are spiritual entities, spirit beings that we do not see. Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Glory to God. There are spiritual battles, spiritual entities, spiritual beings, spirits you don't see. Wicked spirits. And there are these a fight in the heavenlies 24 hours a day. Remember the story of her brother Daniel. 
there are principalities. God sometimes doesn't let us see these battles, but we must remember. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. If you read from 4 to 6, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not cannon, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all of disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Again, my brothers and my sisters, there are principalities, powers, life is spiritual, so much is going on in the realm of the spirit. There is the satanic programming. Glory to God. But thank God. For the anointing to overcome. Principalities and powers and spirit beings that militate against us are destroyed because the anointing is your weapon. The anointing is the weapon. And so what Jesus did with the anointing, we can do. What Jesus did with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you and I can do. God anoints ordinary people to do extraordinary things anointing to do exploits, to be a terror to the kingdom of darkness. Glory to God. Just know and know that you are anointed to overcome. We are not disadvantaged. We cannot be disadvantaged. We carry the Holy Ghost. We have the backing of heaven. We have the weapons of warfare. We have the shield of faith. We have the full armor of God. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have the helmet of salvation. We have the blood of Jesus. We are armed. We have the equipment, the resources to invade the kingdom of darkness, the territory of darkness. Glory to God. By the grace of God, we will take a look at a few people in the Bible who did extraordinary things under the anointing of God. And so, if these biblical ordinary people can do these things, so can we in this dispensation. Because we have the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Glory to the Heavenly Father. Again, God anoints ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Glory to God. Time will not permit me to go over different characters in the scripture that operated under different anointings. But follow for the next Prayer, for the next prayer meeting and by the strength, the grace, the help of the Holy Ghost, we will touch base on a few of the great men and women that operated with exceptional anointing and what they did for the Lord, for the kingdom. Glory to God.
you are uh, you are anointed to overcome any obstacle any challenge don't be perturbed don't worry it is for a time it is for a, for a season we have victory jesus has granted us the victory the reality is the finished work of jesus on the cross of calvary yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us glory to god anointing prayers jesus prayed jesus prayed before the father sent strength to overcome to be able to carry out the assignment so prayer is a key prayer is a key we've talked about talked about prayer your prayer altar gotta keep burning with fire In the place of prayer, we effect changes. We correct things in the spirit through prayer. Glory to God. There has to be a track record in the realm of the spirit. I got to say this. Anointing does is not easy to come by. You got to work for it. You got to work for it. You gotta work for it. We are not lazy Christians. We're not lazy people. You gotta work for it. In the place of prayer, in the place of the word of God, in the place of place of all these spiritual exercises and disciplines. So you begin to build a track record in the realm of the spirit. Satan and his agents are not scared of you. They're scared of what you carry on the inside of you. They are scared of the anointing you carry. The measure of the anointing that you carry. If Satan can confront Jesus face to face, if Satan can confront Jesus, the Lord, fully God. If Satan had the audacity to challenge the Lord Jesus, I mean, who are we? He's not scared of you. He's scared of what you carry. The anointing you carry the grace you carry, the fire that you carry. That's what he's scared of. Glory to God. I want you to share this broadcast. Glory to God. To bless someone. Glory to God. But I need you to understand that you carry the anointing to overcome any challenge, any obstacle, any situation. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Glory to the living Jesus. I will meet up with you, with you guys um, tomorrow. So we go into different kinds of anointing by the grace of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. God empower you. God anoint you more. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you. We acknowledge your Lordship, Jesus. For in you we live and move and have our being. Lord, we ask for anointing of the Spirit, fresh anointing, anointing of fire, in the name of Jesus, Lord, empower us to do your will, to fulfill destiny, to fulfill our purpose. Align us, Lord, with your power. Align us. Let us be aligned to your purpose for us. And let your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I will see you soon. Oh, subscribe on my YouTube channel, The Transforming Ministries. Share this broadcast. Bless someone with it.
do the work of evangelism. Glory to God. And it says, he that evangelizes is wise. Hallelujah. God bless you. I am your friend, Dr. K. Glory to the living Jesus. Have a wonderful, fruitful, glorious week ahead. Amen. Return back with your testimony in Jesus' name. Bible says the testimony of Jesus is that spirit of prophecy. You will testify to the glory of God. That obstacle will not consume you. That burden will not weigh you down because there is anointing that breaks every yoke. Hallelujah. God bless you.